Hello everyone, it's Jeff. And I'm sitting here, well, where's here? First of all, you can see, let me show you where here is. Hold on one sec. This is the little private, it's not really private because there's no private beaches in Puerto Rico, but this is Bahia Serena. It's very hard to get to unless you're living right on it. And right now we're living right on it. Um, and it's a lovely little Caribbean cove with flat, calm water and it's clear and fish swimming around and lots of little crabs everywhere. That's where I am. That's where here is. But you'll also notice there are no clouds in the sky. It's a brilliant, brilliant blue, lovely day. And that's facing west. So that's where here is. This is my, uh, my own little private beach. Well, it's not a private beach. You, you don't have private beaches here in Puerto Rico. But I call it my private beach because I have some families down here, people launching boats on the weekend. But Monday through Friday, it's usually all mine, dude. And because of the storm, here it is Saturday morning. And look, nobody here. That's why people in Puerto Rico, the people in San Juan, you know, tourists go to the East Coast and the North Coast. The people in San Juan, Puerto Rico, when they want to go to the beach or on vacation, they come to the southwest coast. Better beaches, fewer tourists. Just saying. Let me know if you have any questions. Consider this sort of like a uh, tropical storm, hurricane, Isaiah's after action report. You know, we, we, I gave you a video earlier when I was kind of treat this as a practice session for when inevitably, as we're living here, you know, a hurricane's gonna strike and we're gonna have to work with it. Um, and we kind of treated this smaller storm as a practice session for the bigger storms. And it worked out largely okay. We had, let me tell you, uh, first of all, the storm arrived with a, with a force. You know, um, uh, turns out that the, it, it was supposed to slip a little bit further south than it did. And the center of the tropical storm hit us smack dead on. I, I carved out a, a, a set, grabbed a satellite image to show you where it is. You can see here, here is the satellite, well, the rain image, the heat map image that shows the height of the clouds. You can see the dark red area in the center of the mass is uh, the heaviest wind and heaviest rainfall area. And, uh, you can see this arrow shows you the direction that it was traveling. And then this is, this is where we are. So you can see that we, we actually got right here on this part of Puerto Rico, we got this, let me say it this way. We got the worst of a non super bad storm. Is that fair? Is that fair? It wasn't, you know, like a cat four or a cat five or something like that, where you have 200 mile an hour winds. It wasn't anywhere near that. I think the winds, the after reports show the winds peaked here at about 70 miles an hour uh, in gusts, um, which is just below hurricane level. I think that's actually the threshold, if I remember correctly. I'm going off of memory. You can see I am not staring at a computer screen right now, so I'm just going off of my what I remember. <laughs> Um, but the uh, persistent winds, it was, con it was consistent uh, gusts. There was gusts up to about 70. The straight line persistent winds hit about 50 miles an hour consistently with gusts up to 70 uh, during, the, during that big dark red area when it passed right over our head. So there you go. Um, power went down at 5.28 a.m. Thursday morning. And we have backup generators here, and they ran all night. Um, but then we had uh, we had a kind of interesting situation. Um, the uh, you know um, we follow they followed what they ha hurricane protocol, which is good practice for us too. We have a full generator. The generator can power the entire building full. It's strong enough generator can power every appliance and air conditioner in the apartment complex or condo complex um, persistently for three days. But and it's also a good practice. They followed hurricane protocol, which means that if you run run for those three days, what if the power doesn't come on in the three days and you can't get into fuel shipment? So what they did, I think, which was the smart thing to do, the protocol states that they run the power in bursts. 
And largely, I discovered that that's kind of what you need, right? Uh, uh, they, they would run it for two hours in the morning, two hours in the middle of the day, and then three hours at night from, from the dinner hour through approximate bedtime. And what you would do is you were, you know, you just learned, you know, you would cook and you'd let your refrigerator get really, really cold. And then about a half an hour before the power would be scheduled to go off again, you would uh, make sure you didn't open the fridge because you want everything inside to stay cold, right? And, but you also run those air conditioners and you get them, um, you get to chill down the apartment and it would last you pretty good. Uh, there was points where it got uncomfortable because this is the middle of the hottest point of the summer for us here in the Caribbean. The sun's directly overhead. It's 90 degrees with, you know, uh, persistent 80 to 90% humidity. So you feel it, but it, it worked out pretty well. The internet, however, was down. Um, and that, that was a bigger problem, I think, for me. Now, when the power, so, and the internet was down for an important reason. And, and if you're if one of my customers in the internet industry, you understand last mile issues. It's all about, it was all about this time about last mile issues. There was a power outage a couple of weeks ago here in Puerto Rico at uh, generation. There was a generation issue, uh, basically user error at the generator, at the regional gen, uh, power generation facility controlled by the government. But uh, all the power issues here were last mile issues. Um, I, I witnessed, uh, you know, I drove around, I saw trees that were, you know, trees laying on top of power lines, the classic stuff. I mean, we, we had this type of thing, even like during ice storms when, when we lived in uh, Nebraska, just, a few, you know, that, you know, that, you know, power lines get shorted out or they get down. That happens. All last mile issues, but they got it back in rain. There were last mile issues with the internet service as well. Um, we were down, uh, you know, all day Thursday and we were down almost all day yesterday friday this is saturday morning i'm recording this for you so it's two days after the storm um but the internet and power came back online regionally last mile issue solved at approximately 9.05 908 uh, last p.m last night um, which wasn't so bad but i missed a whole day of work and uh no customers yeah, my, my work uh, deliverables, you know, weren't overdue. But, you know, if, you, if you're if you a customer of mine, you know that if I don't bill it, but if I don't do the work by the end of the month, I don't invoice at the end of the month for that work. So the personal impact for me, honestly, speaking honestly, is that now a lot of the work that I'm going to get wrapped up over the next few days, which I was hoping to get wrapped up in the last two days of the month, I'm going to get wrapped up in the next couple of days, but I'm not going to bill that for a month because that's just my policy and that's the way I roll. Um, so uh, that's that. Um, oh, other things. Um, I'll say this. Uh, uh, the company, there was a big update. I mean, I've, I've tethered my cell phone to run Internet <clears throat> from at least a dozen countries. It's probably more um, from from uh, from all of Western Europe, from uh, uh uh, geez, from you know, Central and South America, from the Caribbean previously, from Asia, I've tethered my cell phone uh, to get uh, bursts of internet service, with pretty good results, and had no problem. I expected to be able to do that, but I couldn't tether at all, and I had just done it a week ago. I'd gone to Starbucks, and the local Wi-Fi was crap and wasn't secure, so I tethered and was running a dedicated VPN channel across my tether on AT&T. No problem. But we ran. There were uh, several notifications I, uh, that from AT&T and from the uh, from Apple that we ran carrier updates, and then there was a, a iOS update and some software update. Didn't work. Couldn't get it. Couldn't get my Mac to tether to my iPhone. It was terrible, and uh, but that's why I couldn't finish the task when I wanted to get them finished. So that'll have to be addressed. When we have the condo, it's going to be different, right? It's going to be a bit different. Um, the plan, the, the, if, you're, if you're catching up with me, I'm, we're, we moved here in December. We actually arrived here in uh, the Cabo Rojo district um, on December 24th of 2019. So we've been here about seven months. And uh, the goal is we're staying in the apartment and while we're building out a condo, in a, in a nearby town, a beach resort town called Bocaron. Um, and it's a lovely condo, it's it's nice, it's very modern. Ellen and I love modern design, so it's, it's gonna be great. That said, um, COVID happened, you know, we were supposed to be in there 
now. But COVID came and nothing happened construction wise for two and a half months. And so we're hoping we get in. That's really where I'm hoping. I'm hoping we get in for Christmas, but you know, they're telling me late, late October, November, but uh, things do move a little bit slower here in, in, in the islands. So I'm hoping we're in for, we're going to celebrate Christmas in, uh, in our, in our place. That said, the plans for that, I've got a pri I'm going to have a private generator. Not one I'm relying on anybody else for, but it's going to be a private generator just for us. So public power, private generation, and an and emergency battery backup for critical systems. Um, I learned a lot because I think I'm going to run my generator with the same type of hurricane protocol that uh, that they ran here. I don't think I, I was really thinking I just got to run that generator the whole time, but now I realize that's just not the smart thing to do. I will run my generator for two to three hour bursts. Um, and then I'll have emergency backup for uh, network, computers, and uh, things of that nature. I, th I just think it's smart. It's just a smart way to do it. So uh, that, that's a lesson that I'm taking away with me. Oh, what else happened? Um, so uh, the day before, you know, I, I'm exercising, you know, I swim in the ocean almost every day. You should be jealous. It's great. Um, and but I walk and I do some, you know, light weights. It, the point being is that I'm very, it's a bit part of my habit. And so I knew the storm might take that, make that impossible for a day or two. So I wanted to make sure I got my work hits in on Tuesday and Wednesday. And on Wednesday, on Wednesday, I'm doing my workout and uh, there's some hive that's been disturbed by a construction team. And um, I got a bee sting. Now, I'm not allergic to bees, but this is a weird one. So for, th th what I got is I got, I got stung by a bee that hadn't been practicing proper social distancing or hygiene. So on the day of the storm, that happened. So that was my walk Wednesday and it itched and it was annoying me, you know, more than, I mean, I've used to bug stings here. Heck, I mean, I'm from Arizona for goodness sake. And, you know, then I lived in, you know, very you know, uh, mosquito prone areas before. And now I'm here in the Caribbean where every little insect, insect wants to bite you because it's starving and it wants to have more food. So it wants to eat me. But I'm used to that. When you got creams and solves, but this one was just itching and it, it felt weird, different. And so that, that was, that was uh, you know, later on Wednesday. But then by the middle of the storm, you know, I'm distracted. I'm, I got the storm blowing and, uh, and the, the storm's blowing through. And by the way, this is what the storm looked like. This is the storm. Heavy rain. It's the back end of the storm. The front end hit us at uh, about 5 to 5 30 this morning. This is the back end, big rainmaker right now. So that, that was actually late in the storm after I'd gotten up and had some coffee. So it missed the highest winds, um, but it rained like a mother. Anyway, so I, I on Wednesday morning, I got up to, did the thing, got stung by a bee, itched. Wednesday morning, I've got this weird shaped. It looked like I was being uh, slowly absorbed by the Borg of insects as this thing creeped up my calf and it became very unpleasant. So I went to the doctor yesterday. Well, the doctor's office was not yet open from the storm. So I went to the pharmacist. The pharmacist walked out, took one look at it and said, yeah, go to the hospital. That's weird. Um, what had happened was I got a bacterial infection. The, you know, the, the bee was dirty, a dirty little bee, and uh, gave me uh, gave me something in the process, uh, kind of the equivalent of an insect venereal disease, if you think about it in a strange sort of way, you know. But you know, and in a way, this makes me feel a little bit like a wuss. You know, I'm from Arizona, scorpions, tarantulas, you know, you know, uh, um, yellow jackets, which are smaller wasps everywhere. Um, you know, uh, tarantula hawks. Holy crap. Just, just, I'm going to go, when I get back, I'm going to find a picture of a tarantula hawk. I'm going to paste it right here. Because these are huge flying wasps that kill tarantulas and lay eggs in them. So these are, these are just monsters. Anyway, these things are everywhere. Arizona is, Arizona has plenty of things that want to kill you. So I survived that. And then I would like to be able to say, hey, I'm a tough guy. Hey guys, what happened to Jeff? Jeff got uh, attacked by one of those new invasive Asian murder hornets. Sounds like a joke, but that's a real thing. Invasive Asian murder hornets. If you 
haven't kept up with that, look it up real quick and be amazed. But no, I got, I got stung. I got taken out by a honeybee. I, and, and quite frankly, that's an assault on my manhood. I, I want a much more dangerous predator hunting me to, in order to, to make me feel better about myself. Anyway, I'm going to do a quick flash. If you're sensitive, you know, it's, it's just a creeping crud under my skin. Went to the, the, it looks better. Here's a photo of it looking better because the swelling is down in the leg considerably. And that swelling is down because they, uh, they actually gave me, you know, intravenous, uh, uh anti-inflammatories. And, uh, so I'm better. So it's been an interesting week and, uh, and now I'm back at work. Wasn't that bad, but you can see lessons learned, things happening. Um, the next storm, I don't know, nobody knows when it's going to come, but I think we'll be even more better prepared for it. The, the food stocks did well. We just was proper. Um, the water bottles that we had stacked up, that was fine. Um, all the other provisions were good. Um, the only thing that really let me down was tethering. And, and, and something else is because, and I think that I should have known this from my experience in technology, but it had been so reliable, tethering had been so reliable and so bulletproof for so long, I had gotten complacent about it. And so I assumed that tethering would be my connectivity back up here. Uh, it, uh, I just assumed that. And uh, I have learned I can't assume that because there's too many moving pieces. AT&T could change their carrier settings. Apple could get in a, in a fight with AT&T and throttle them. Um, you know, uh, uh, an iOS update could break network settings or, 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 or you, know, you know, create some DNS c conflicts. There's too many moving pieces I don't have control over. Um, if I have a, a, a router that I've set up and I've controlled, I control when I update it. So what am I going to do? When we have the, uh, uh, well, first of all, let me say this, Elon Musk. Like him, he's kind of a wacky, whacked out, kind of one of those edgy, you know, uh, you know, uh, innovators that, that just sits out there on the edge. That's all cool. I'm not a big fan of, of relying on gov government subsidization um, at all. If you know me, anything about me, you know that about me. And you know that there's some solidly good reasons why I'm not. And if not, just get me a whiskey and I'll tell you all about it. But the, uh, 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 he's working on this private project, which is what the Earthlink satellite network. He's going to bring, you know, uh, high-speed bandwidth from flow fine satellites. He's probably just wacky enough to pull it off. If he, if he gets this one done and he uses only private money to do it, I'll, get, I'll become a customer. Uh, but that said, I'm going to have my wired cable internet at the condo once we get in. And then I'm going to have something else. There are... Uh, the equivalent of cell, special cellular networks here that do that. Um, there's also a, a Hughes uh, satellite internet. I'm going to have two systems. Actually, I'll probably have three because I'll have the cable. I'll have some sort of a wireless to point last mile connection. And I'll still, if they get uh, uh, a tethering fixed, I'll still have that as well. So I will be triple redundant with my connectivity in my condo, and that's just important to me for, oh, so many reasons, uh, let alone revenue. Um, but there's something else to take away from this. This is really interesting. We're at a point technologically and culturally and uh, almost philosophically uh, where I think it's uh, this is kind of a good thing if you think about it for long term we're at a point where everything is pointing to us to the world not just to America uh, not just to the West, Western you know the you know Western nations it's pointing in the world of, of really no matter what you hear it's pointing towards less reliance on government not more and now it sounds like it's a little counterintuitive opinion. I might even do my podcasts on this. If you're not following the Jeff Effect podcast, go to jeffeffect.com and do that right away. Um, but I may cover that in one of my podcasts, but it, it's really this. The people here in Puerto Rico, to a large extent, they've given up on government. Now, the government has its corruption issues. It's got all this stuff. The, the local power company is publicly owned with a bunch of fat cats on top, you know, reaping the largesse and not fixing the infrastructure and borrowing money to build uh, big museums instead of actually repairing the power lines. Long story. 
But the people, they don't, they've learned not to rely on government. I mean, I've heard this, after Hurricane Maria, which was the bad one from a couple of years ago, um, the people were really upset and they blamed uh, the, the federal government and the Trump administration for not bringing water stuff. To, and they discovered just a few months ago that all the water shipments and stuff that were sent from the mainland to help Puerto Rico just sat in warehouses and got old. The local government just didn't pass them out. Millions of bottles. It's crazy. Diapers, emergency radios, batteries, all those things just sitting in local warehouses because the local government couldn't find a way to distribute them. Hmm. That said, but the people here have learned and are learning more and more not to rely on central government. People have their own power. Um, there's, a, there's another thing here. Uh, uh, the, actually, the, uh, those uh, Elon Musk you know, battery packs, house battery packs, they sell pretty well here. Um, they're expensive, but I'm, I'm looking at it. I need to get some more work from you folks if I'm going to take and uh, buy one of those. But, the, uh, but, they, but they mount and they, they can power your home for 24 hours on, on battery power. Um, people have their own private generators. Building pe uh, People collective get together and, and kind of repeat a model from the dawn of the electrical age. Uh, they, you know, they, they say, uh, it used to be, you know, when, when electricity was first being wired, there was no, pu there were no public utilities. Individual buildings would install gener power generation, not very efficiency, not efficiently kind of polluted away too much because there was no control over what, what way they powered it. They, a lot of these guys had coal furnaces and they just borrowed the heat from coal furnaces to power the electrical generators. And, um, that tended to pollute more than, than needed to be done. And that was a problem. Get it. But they had all buildings had, you know, if you had a big building, you know, apartment complex with the 500 tenants, they'd all chip in and they'd buy a generator together. Well, that's what people do here all the time. Apartment complexes, condo complexes, individual uh, townhomes, the, the people who in place, they get together and they buy a generator together. They keep it stocked together. There are private fuel delivery services that, that deliver. Um, I understand if you, if you think that everybody should go solo. I, I want to set that argument aside for the moment. The point is that people are taking care of themselves, right? You, I see people all the time, you know, with, with what I'm talking about. They'll have a satellite dish on their roof, and it's not for great satellite television. It's, it's because the cable company, you know, they, they want to be redundant. They need internet. They want to have their entertainment all the time, and, and there are services to do that. And the same way, I've met lots of people like me that are living here for the beautiful weather for the beautiful vistas and uh, for the fishing um, and for the cheap uh, cheap cost of living which is which is which is really nice and uh, but they they're still working they're working remote you know they're not dependent upon big cities so just like the internet as a rule has created this huge decentralization and what we all call the gig economy has created this huge force of decentralization I think that that this that this has all pushed us into this greater decentralization. And look at 2020, he's just done this like crazy, right? You know, uh, here in Puerto Rico, we moved here, they had a bunch of earthquakes in a certain part of the island. They happen in clusters every once in a while. Everybody was self-reliant on that. Uh, then you got the, uh, uh, you know, the COVID crisis and people were working on that. And people were working on them, taking care of themselves, you know, uh, largely self-isolating. Um, Puerto, Rico, Puerto Rico hasn't had too much of a trouble. And uh, then you have this tropical storm. Everybody's taking, everybody's taking care of themselves. Now, I will say this, one point for centralization. We don't like it. This, well, we, it, there's a popular antipathy towards big corporations. But I got to tell you, um, Walmart, Walmart is indispensable. Because even though, yes, yes, they have the impact sometimes of driving out smaller businesses. I, that's absolutely true. Take nothing away from that. Home Depot almost destroyed, you know, Home Depot and Lowe's, you know, they almost wiped out companies like Ace Hardware until Ace Hardware rejiggered themselves and actually saved their company. But the power of these organizations logistically to take and, and arrange for full containers of, 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 not just vital, vital things we need, things we want. I mean, the, the, I, uh, to get them to remote locations, they can just charter a ship and send it. They don't need an act of Congress. They don't need a government authority 
they just load up a boat and they send it. Um, I've never had trouble getting water. I've never had trouble getting high quality proteins. I had never trouble, no trouble getting, uh, I never had trouble getting milk. I've had no trouble getting uh, coffee. I've had no trouble getting all, not just the necessities of life, but dang near some of those luxuries of life. I had no trouble getting them either. Um, that can't be done by a small business. The, uh, the major grocery store chain here is called Mr. Special. I love that name. I wish I had thought of that name. Anyway, they, they're, they're pretty active in the Caribbean and in Florida and, and a few other places, but they've been well stocked. Now, to protect themselves, they put some, you know, some purchasing limits. You know, uh, you know, you can, like with toilet paper, when toilet paper was in short supply, you could only buy two packs at a time type of thing. You know, they've, they've done some smart things like that. But, and every once in a while, you, 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 you look for something you want, you can't find it. Like, um, I <laughs> see, spoiled. This is a spoiled first word problem. I got up to a point during the middle of the COVID crisis where all of a sudden I said, I want a steak. I couldn't buy a steak. I could buy plenty of hamburger and pork and lots of chicken and eggs, but so for some reason I couldn't get my hands on a steak. And and that's just inconvenient. And it's only a little tiny minor inconvenience, right? It's not a problem. But the, some of the smaller locations, some small family groceries, ran out of almost everything. Just it just. And some of those ended up going to Sam's Club buying at the wholesale rate and then reselling in their stores. So even those small businesses would have serious difficulty if it were not for these big companies. Think about that. It's actually a pretty important economic concept, my friends. What else? Uh, what else? Is there anything you need to know? Oh, but school of tiger fish just swam by. I wish I'd had the camera facing the other way. Um, that's about it for now. If I think anything else, I think I think this is the last big video because this storm has passed. It's it's now a full hurricane and it's heading towards the coast of Florida. It's supposed to skirt on up. I got friends in South Carolina. Hey, SC, hang tough. Uh, you, you, I'm sure you'll be fine. You guys have had these before. Oh, Siri kicked in when I said hey, SC. Ah, um, that's good. Um. Cheers, Taskowski, coffee. Mm. What else? I think that's it, guys. If you have any questions, shoot me an email or text me. You guys know how to get a hold of me. I'm not exactly shy about getting my information out there. So find me if you need me. It's been great, and um, talk to you soon.